Cardiovascular examination. Inspection. Looking for colour, pallor, pore perfusion, tar staining from smoking, exanthematic matter, yellow cholesterol deposits, capillary refill time. Looking for infective endocarditis with splinter hemorrhaging, Janeway lesions and Osler nodes. Assess pulse rate with the radial artery. Then assess both radial pulses, look for radial radio delay. Check brachial pulse for character and volume. Lift arm up while palpating both pulses, checking for collapsing pulse for aortic regurgitation. Palpate carotid pulse, and then switch over and palpate the other side, comparing both sides. Inspect the face starting with the eyes, looking for corneal arcus. Exempt the lasma, yellow cholesterol deposits. Check conjunctiva for signs of anemia. Check for central cyanosis in the lips and the tongue. And lift the tongue for high arch palate for aortic regurgitation. Inspect JVP by position of patient in a semi recumbent position at 45 degrees, getting to turn the head to the left. A raised JVP may indicate presence of venous hypertension. Inspect the chest, looking for any signs of a pacemaker, thoracotomy, scars, swelling, chest drains, pectus conigtum, pectus excavatum, and any pulsations. Palpation. Locate the apex beat, which is usually fifth intercostal space midclavicular line in healthy individuals. Displacement of the apex beat from the usual location can occur in ventricular hypertrophy. We then move on to palpate for thrills. It's a palpable vibration caused by turbulent blood flow in individuals with a murmur. From there, we palpate for heaves. A parasternal heave is a precordial impulse, which is caused by right ventricular hypertrophy. Oscillation. Herbs point located in the third intercostal space, left sternal border, can be used to check heart rate, comparing it with the radial pulse to determine any possible pulse deficits. To check if heart sounds are systolic or diastolic, especially in patients with tachycardia, palpate the carotid pulse as the first heart sound should be in simultaneous with the carotid pulse. We then move on to the valves, which is the aortic valve, the second ICS, right sternal border. We then have the pulmonary valve, second ICS, left sternal border. Tricuspid valve, the fourth ICS, right sternal border. And then the mitral valve, fifth ICS, left midclavicular line. We can now palpate the carotid pulse and listen to each individual area, looking for systolic and diastolic pressure, starting with the apex where the mitral valve is, moving on to tricuspid valve. From there we go to the aortic valve, and then the pulmonary valve. And then we can listen to each artery, starting with the carotid, working our way down, looking for any murmurs, whoosh sounds. It's also beneficial to oscillate lung bases to check for any signs of heart failure where we could hear any crackles in the bases or any rails. This way we can rule out any signs of heart failure. It can also be beneficial to check for any sacral edema which could indicate heart failure and also any pitting edema or pedal edema which can also indicate any signs of heart failure as well. Subscribe to the channel for more.